stop me if you've heard this before. Life is suffering. You don't get to choose not to suffer, but you can choose what you're going to suffer for. And something I may not have told you so far yet, though, is that you can also choose how you're going to suffer. Are you going to suffer for the regrets and hate yourself and, and constantly think about what life could have been like? What are the things that cause you to suffer? Is, you know, life is unfair. Yeah, absolutely, life is unfair. Therefore, what? Do you sit there and scratch your chin and frown and say, life is unfair, so therefore I can't be happy. In other words, are you gonna be bitter? Are you gonna be full of resentment? Are you gonna be full of contempt? Are you gonna hate people because they have, from your naive expectation, you believe their life is somehow better than yours, and that they don't suffer as much as you because you don't know what you don't know. You just assume that the problems of your life are the things that you don't have, and then we assume that people who have those things therefore don't have those problems. So are you therefore gonna be bitter and resentful and contemptuous towards those people who have the things that you that you just think that your life would be better if you had? Or are you going to look at life for, for what it is and say, yes, life is, life is suffering, this is true. At the very beginning, I asked that question, who would you be if you didn't go through any sufferings in life? And I'll tell you who you would be. You would be, however old you are, wearing a diaper and crying right now. Because the things that have caused you to grow have been those bouts of, of suffering and challenges in your life. Now, have you become a better person or a worse person? That depends on how you've responded to those challenges. When you choose your suffering, then it's easier to shoulder. It's easier to pick it up and go with it. If you can see more of your life as the choice that it is, not to imagine it as a choice, but to see it for the choice that it is, then the sufferings of life are not going to seem so catastrophic. That's a really important thing, by the way. We don't give it enough credit. We, we say it sometimes, but I don't think we, we necessarily internalize it very well most of the time. That if you've never been through suffering, you can't relate to people who have been, who have gone through suffering. Um, you don't have to have gone through like as much as somebody else. But if there are things that you've never had to struggle with, then you can't understand why some people struggle with it. Or better yet, the solution is, is so obvious to you. And by the way, things that are, that are incredibly obvious to you should cause you to step back and think about, is this really so obvious? In other words, we typically can only be incredibly certain of things that we don't understand entirely. So for example, if any of you have, um, oh, actually going back to something from one of our earlier articles, why would somebody continue drinking? They're, you know, they're alcoholic, they can see that they're destroying their families. Can't they just stop drinking? If you, yeah, if you've never struggled with something like that before, then that question, that solution, sorry, is so obvious to you. What do you do? You just stop drinking. It's all you have to do. But is it that obvious? No, it's not that easy. Because if it was, everybody would, would do it. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good rule of life. If you look at, at a solution, you say, wow, this is so obvious. How come people don't just? Then you should cause you to step back and ask yourself, huh, how come people don't just? There must be a reason for it. If people don't just stop drinking, there's a reason for it. It's not just, oh, because they like it so much. Uh, do, do you think that they really like it when they come out of it and they see the destruction that, that's been left behind? And do you think that people who start using heroin and meth, do you think that they could just stop? Do you think that they like living on the streets, going through what they're going through? Do you, that, that, you think that when they were sitting in the, in the desks that you're all sitting in, that they looked at their life in the future and said, I can't wait to be heroin addicted, living on the streets, eating out of trash cans. Oh man, someday if I work really hard at my heroin addiction. Of course not, nobody dreamed of that. Nobody dreamed of that. And so the ability to empathize with people, to understand what people are going through. Again, you don't have to have been addicted to heroin necessarily to understand or to empathize with people. You know, it helps. I'm not saying you should go get addicted to heroin just so that you can help people get it off of heroin. But you can understand that there are some things in your life that are compulsive activities that you might afterwards be like, how come I can't just stop fill in the blank? And you have a little taste of what it's like. 
to go through what they're going through. What else? When you have money, you have, the, you, have, you have a certain level of freedom. You don't have to do things as much as you want to do things. And some of you maybe have heard that saying before, some people do what they have to, other people do what they want to. People who have money and power do what they want to, people who don't do the things that they have to do. Now the things that you, that you have to do, if you have uh, very little money, then you're focusing on those necessities. You wanna work every day because you have to, because you, you have to, to provide the basics. Once the basics are taken care of, now you can start doing the things that you want to do. And so power is a big one because when you have money, you don't have to put up with things nearly as much. I mean, if you think about it, um, I don't, I mean, minimum wage is like $16 or something like that an hour. If you get a parking ticket, that can wipe out almost an entire day. Actually, it can wipe out an entire day worth of salary for you. If you're going to work and you're running late, like, oh no, uh, until you park somewhere, and just like the back part of your car is hanging over into a red zone, and then you go in and you come out and there's a parking ticket on your window, that could wipe out all the work you just did for the past eight hours. That's horrible. You know, they like, so I just basically work for free for the whole day. If you have, you know, $10 million, you park and you go, there's nowhere to park except for the red zone. Whatever. You park in the whole red zone. They come out, they give you a ticket. You, 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 maybe you, before you even turn your car on, you just scan it, pay it, done, easy. You just paid for parking. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't delay your day at all. Doesn't, 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 doesn't hold you up at all. You don't give it, you don't give a second thought to it. In other words, there's less stress, and, there's stress and anxiety in other areas. This is true. You just trade off your, your worries and your concerns. But the point is that you know, this, these are probably the things that, we, that we're after, and power, status, and then one more thing that, that kind of is connected to the necessities. I think this is probably what most of us think of when we say that, and that's stability. We don't want to have to be moving from place to place, from job to job, from city to city. We want to be able to set up a life somewhere because that's the only way you can build a life. You can't build a house if you move to San Diego and you, you pour the foundation for the house and then you move. And then you move to Oregon and you pour the foundation for the house and you start building it and then you move. And then you go to Vegas and you pour the foundation and then you move again. You can't ever finish building a house if you're always moving around. If you're not stable where you are, you can't build a stable life. So people want power, I and mean, people want money because it provides the necessities, and then you're stable. Once you're stable, that's gonna be the, the foundation on which, as you can see, this house of power and status can be built. And so this is probably the thing that, that most people are after, having, being stable for sure, having power, not necessarily being the most powerful, but being able to, to, to live the way that you want to, and then status also. People like status, man. We like it when people think highly of us. I remember when I was, uh, where I grew up in, in Los Angeles in, in Echo Park, and this is before gentrification. If you go there now, it's all like coffee shops and, and art houses and very, very different from where I grew up. There's a, a friend of mine was murdered in, a, in an apartment building over there that I drive past it now, and now it's all like condos. It's amazing how much blood is in that building. People would get killed there from time to time. And now it's just been painted over and given a new facade, and now it's a, it's a condo with very expensive, um, very expensive units. But when I, when, I was, when I was growing up there, there were a lot of really crappy apartment buildings like that one that had Lexuses parked outside of them. And you might think like, ah, drug dealers. No, people who would go and lease a Lexus because leasing is less expensive than buying. And why would they lease a Lexus? Because as soon as they left their crappy apartment, they liked the idea that people would see them in traffic and think, wow, they must have money. They're driving a Lexus, they're driving a Mercedes. And then they would play the part. And then they'd get home at the end of the day and they'd go back to, to their real life. You saw this a lot and you do see this in some neighborhoods. It's pretty common actually. Because we like the idea of having, of having status. That's one of those dangers of saying, fake it until you make it. Because if you can get by by faking it, then why bother ever making it? If you can kind of get all the accolades and you can get all the benefits of, of pretending to be something, then you almost never really have to become the thing. You know, because what you're really after is not the thing itself, not the, not the stardom, not the stability, not the power, but just the appearance of stability and power. And so be careful with that. So when, the, when your parents are, are telling you, do this thing because we want you to have money. Because for them, understand that it isn't about the money, it's about stability 
and, and power and, and status. And so they kind of see probably, they probably see these things as being the same. How do you get happiness? Well, the way you end up happy is you're stable and you have power and you have status. Yeah. Explain. Yeah, if I were to ask you guys, for example, um, have you have you messed up in a way that, that has caused you a little bit of suffering? Probably. If I were to ask you again in two years, if I see you guys as 12 years, if I ask you the same question, since I saw you last, and I ask you last, have you done that again? Yeah, probably. And if I see you when you're 25 and 35 and 45, and then very close to, to, to death, as Marcus is saying now, if I were to ask, can you catalog all those regrets? <laughs> It's gonna be a lot, man. It's gonna be a lot. And that's part of that danger of, of suffering. Again, stop me if you've heard this before. Life is suffering. You don't get to choose not to suffer, but you can choose what you're going to suffer for. And something I may not have told you so far yet, though, is that you can also choose how you're going to suffer. Are you going to suffer for the regrets and hate yourself and, and constantly think about what life could have been like? Or are you going to look at the things that, that it, or are you going to look at your regrets and say, never again. I won't do that thing again because I don't like the way I felt when I, when I did it. I don't like the results. I don't like, I don't like the impact it had on other people when I did this. Whatever it is, cheated on someone, stole from somebody, talked badly to somebody, made them feel bad. And, or worse yet, when you do these things for yourself, when you realize that you lived a life that wasn't entirely yours that you live a life to, to please others. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing. There are some people who, who really flourish by living lives to please others because that's what they enjoy. They enjoy seeing other people happy. But at the, at the expense of yourself, and I mean at, this, at the expense of your own humanity, this is, this is a problem. Like if you enjoy making other people happy, fine. But if you're doing it to the point that you're degrading yourself and you're treating yourself as though you're less than other people, that's a problem because that would be a, a trend in your life. And it's gonna be difficult to live a meaningful, fulfilling life. You're, just, you're gonna compound the suffering that way. Yeah. So life is just what you suffer for. Yeah. Life is what you suffer for and life is how you suffer. Do you have reasons for suffering? Dude, you guys are living in the most prosperous country in the history of the world. You're dressed in ways that, that kings could not have afforded to dress just a couple hundred years ago. You have running water, we have electricity, we have air conditioning, we have computers, we have all of these things. So therefore, are you still suffering? Yes. <laughs> You're just suffering differently. We make that mistake when we think, I mean, think about this, when you, when you sit there and say, you know, rich people don't suffer. If I just had money, I would, all my problems would be solved. Compare your life right now to the average king from a couple hundred years ago. Your life, you have food available to you 24-7. Even if you're poor, you have food available to you. You have electricity, you have Wi-Fi, you have, you, have, you have unimaginable riches. Things that would have been unimaginable a couple hundred years ago to, to, to the kings of the world. And yet you still have problems today. That tells you money and stuff doesn't solve your problems. It, in some cases, creates more problems, but at the very least, it just means you have different problems. So what are the things that cause you to suffer? Is, you know, life is unfair. Yeah, absolutely, life is unfair. Therefore what? Do you sit there and scratch your chin and frown and say, life is unfair, so therefore I can't be happy. In other words, are you gonna be bitter? Are you gonna be full of resentment? Are you gonna be full of contempt? Are you gonna hate people because they have, because their life in, from your, from your, Un, from, your, from your naive expectation, you believe their life is somehow better than yours, and that they don't suffer as much as you, because you don't know what you don't know. You just assume that the problems of your life are the things that you don't have, and then we assume that people who have those things, therefore, don't have those problems. 
So are you therefore going to be bitter and resentful and contemptuous towards those people who have the things that you, that you just think that your life would be better if you had? Or are you going to look at life for, for what it is and say, yes, life is, life is suffering. This is true. At the very beginning, I asked that question, who would you be if you didn't go through any sufferings in life? And I'll tell you who you would be. You would be, however old you are, wearing a diaper and crying right now. Because the things that have caused you to grow have been those bouts of, of suffering and challenges in your life. Now, have you become a better person or a worse person? That depends on how you respond to those challenges. Have you allowed yourself to become a worse person? Have you been jaded? I was talking to a, a student a while back. Um, he was telling me that, that, um, that where he grew up, he wasn't allowed to ever show emotions. And that if he showed emotions, his family would give him a whole bunch of grief over it. You tell him, you know, and, and so he, kind of, he, was, he was telling me that, that, that's, that that's, even today that still kind of carries with him. And he, it's interesting because it tells me that this person wished they could show emotion. That they could show how they were feeling and what they were going through. But if you don't have the avenue for doing that, are you suffering because you have no one to talk to? Yes, of course. So what does that make you do? It could make you bitter. It can make you angry. It can cause you to therefore you know, become jaded and hostile towards everybody you meet and therefore make the world a worse place. Or it could cause you to have empathy for people who are struggling with the exact same thing, those challenges of life. Again, it isn't that you're not going to suffer. Of course you're going to suffer. What are you, what are you going to suffer for? And how are you going to, to shoulder that suffering? Because the way that you overcome it is by, is by picking it up. Figure out what the thing in your life is that, that, that you're responsible for. Find a responsibility. We, we run away from responsibilities. We run away from challenges. And I understand that, the idea of running away from those things because we have it built into our heads that these are terrible things. But whatever that responsibility is, especially if you get to pick it up and choose what the suffering is going to be. If you get to pick it up and choose what the responsibility is going to be. What makes us bitter and resentful is that we oftentimes feel like we have no choice in it, but you do have a choice in it, whatever it is. You know, we, we need money. Like you, you don't need as much money if you don't buy as much stuff. Oh, uh, but you have to have a car. I don't have to do anything except for stay white and die, man. Everything after that is an entire choice. I don't even have to wake up in the morning. I could have killed myself last night. So could most of you. But you chose not to. You chose to be here. Therefore, you've chosen life. That is fantastic. <laughs> Keep choosing life. And by choosing life, what are you therefore choosing? You're choosing the suffering that goes along with it. But now it's a choice. You're not forced to do it. You could, you could do whatever you want to do. You're entirely free to do that. But it's just like, think of this. Right now, many of us just 100% don't want to be here. I mean, I, mean I, I assume that there's only maybe one or two of you who are even listening to me at this point because we're forced to be in school. And then a year and a half from now, or a year from now, some of you will visit me and ask me to help you with an essay because you want to pay a whole bunch of money to keep going to school. So right now, it's free. We don't want to be here. We do everything we can to avoid it. And then after high school, we go to college and we're willing to pay tens and tens of thousands of dollars to do the thing that we were getting for free just a year ago. Why? Because we're not paying for the education. I mean, I, I, I'm saying this with all the love in the world, guys, but you've got somebody here in front of you who's, who's better qualified than most university professors who you're gonna meet. I have more degrees than most people have letters in their names. And that's my arrogant statement for the day. And yet, you don't want to hear it. Why? Because it's free. I have to do it. And yet, a year and a half from now, two years from now, you're going to be paying tens and tens of thousands of dollars, burying your life in debt to go get the exact same thing. Why? Because you're not paying for the education. You're paying for the choice. Some of us are standing outside, you know, whatever. You know, standing outside the a group of friends are standing outside of society, standing outside. But we like it. We thank God for the choice. It's the choice that, that, that makes it all worthwhile. When you choose your suffering, then it's easier to shoulder. It's easier to pick it up and go with it. If you can see more of your life as the choice that it is, not to imagine it as a choice, but to see it for the choice that it is, 
and the sufferings of life are not going to seem so catastrophic. It's going to be part of life. It's going to be, this is the thing I've chosen. And if I've chosen it, my God, then it must be okay. Isn't that one of the things that you learn about how to manipulate people? You trick people into thinking that your idea was their idea, so they'll like it, and then they'll go with it. Don't trick yourself into it. Understand it and realize it for what it is, that it is your choice. And then the sufferings of life, again, don't seem so catastrophic. And then you can move through it freely, happily. Hmm. Is life fair? I'll go back to that. No, of course not. Of course not. Are you treated fairly? No, some of you are treated unfairly negatively, and some of you are treated unfairly positively. Some of you guys are ugly, and you're treated accordingly, aren't you, by the world? <laughs> some of you are pretty, and you are treated accordingly by the world, aren't you? I have a friend who I was growing up, well, not even growing up, so I was already, I was already growing up. Um, she was like Miss L.A. or something like that. She did like beauty pageants and all that. And um, we were very close, and her, her experience with police was that police were very helpful. They'd pull her over all the time because she was not a good driver. And they would let her know, hey, slow down. You know, you're, you're going to hurt somebody. Hey, your, your taillight's broken. I've never just gotten a warning before. You know why? Because I am ugly. <laughs> I've never gotten a warning before. She got nothing but warnings. And then one day she got pulled over by a female officer and guess what she got? A ticket, not a warning. And she was furious. And at that point she, she was convinced that's a bad police officer. That's, that's probably one of those corrupt ones. You know? Some of you have no idea about the privileges and the, and the opportunities that you get just by being what you are. By the way, that happens along with attractiveness, that happens with skin color, that happens with gender, that happens with your, where you come from. It happens with a whole bunch of things in life. But what are the things that we notice when the things don't go our way? Are you oppressed? Yeah, of course, everybody is. Do you get, uh, do you get advantages that you don't even realize? Yeah, we don't notice them. Because for us, it's just, it's Tuesday. Have you ever noticed that some people in the class, they sneeze and everyone ignores them? Some people sneeze in class and everyone's like, bless you, bless you, bless you. You get popularity privilege. Some people can, can come into class and you're gone for one day. People are asking, where's so-and-so? Some of us can be gone for a month and a half and no one will even notice that we were there. It's not fair. How are you going to suffer with that? Are you going to be angry about it? Bitter? Resentful? No one loves me. No one cares about me. Nobody even notices. Maybe. But are you there for them? Or are you there for you? Better yet, are you there for the future you? That's going to grow from that suffering, hopefully. And be able to make the world a better place in a way that other people cannot. Because you have the ability to make the world a better place in a specific way that's specific to you. Other people have the ability to make the world a better place in ways that are specific to them. But we all have the ability to make the world a worse place. <laughs> Believe that. So, how are you going to suffer? To make the world a better place or a worse place? Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques. Happy Wednesday.